Learn what a sources and uses table is, how to make one for your investment ideas, and why it is so important to make one before approaching lenders, equity investors, and even general partners. Hi, I'm Dave Dejewski, the Managing Director for MLC Capital Partners, and like many of our clients, we participate in collaborative forums, both online and offline. We see a good number of investment summaries, and we help advisory clients and those seeking capital to get their pitches into shape for success. Sophisticated investors are almost always going to want to see a sources and uses table. They'll ask for sources and uses without specifying that it's a table or a schedule because it's generally understood what they are and what they look like. If you're asked to provide a sources and uses table and you don't know what one is or how to properly construct one, you may have already sent a negative signal to your partners without even realizing it. Take a look at these examples of what I pulled from investment summaries that I recently saw posted in an investment forum by some pretty intelligent people. These examples are what not to do when submitting sources and uses. Now these are actual quotes. In each of these examples, the person summarizing the deal did a lot of good work to find the deal, but then confused sources and uses with other concepts. Let's take a look. Assume the loan and refi. That might be classified as an exit strategy, as opposed to sources and uses. Same with this one, sell, even though it's a very simplified version. Multifamily recently rehabbed. That might be considered uh, multifamily is the asset class or the asset type. Uh, recently rehabbed is a qualifier, but it's certainly not sources and uses. This one here gets kind of close. It talks about 861K in debt, which is as close as I've seen recently to an actual sources and uses. And then they go on to qualify that it's based on market cap price. This one here, stabilized office buildings. This is an asset type. It's a, uh, a strategy which is stabilized. And then we have possible build on new vacant lots as... Uh, what they want to do with it. Now this might be classified under uses, but there's a better way to express this. Sources and uses in this case said office. That again is an asset type. This one here, not sure what that means. Sources and uses equals zero. And in this case, sources and uses or current uses, they say here, they didn't even mention sources in this particular case. They simply said current uses are none. And what that tells me is that money there are currently no uses, they don't need any. It's probably not the same signal that the person writing this particular example wanted me or others in the investment community to see. Now, while they used concepts like exit strategies, pieces of the capital stack, asset type, they may have also simply communicated that they didn't know what information to provide. And the communication that comes to the receiver in this case is that they are clearly either new to the business or that capital providers need to be extra careful to dig into their past performance and scrutinize the deals from these folks before committing any capital. If nothing else, statements like these here will throw a caution flag and they're either going to slow down a deal review or they're going to get it thrown out altogether. And you'll see why in just a minute. Now this module is intended to help you avoid potentially costly mistakes, to improve your chances of getting funded, and to make you a more sophisticated critic of other investment ideas. Let's first begin by defining what we mean by sources and what we mean by uses. Now, both are pretty simple, but to be clear about what we mean, we want to add the words of funds to the end of both right here. So sources, and sources of funds and uses of funds. Uses of funds includes all the major elements of your plan where you intend to spend money. Examples may include equity value of a property or a holding entity, assumption of debt, payment of fees, renovations and improvements or improvements, uh, holding costs, and any other costs that you hope to pay in order to make your deal work. Sources of funds means detailing each source of capital and the tranches of that capital that you're going to use to make the deal work. Examples on the sources side might include revolving lines of credit, any loans, credit facilities, subordinate notes, assumptions of debt, 
sponsor cash contributions, limited partner contributions, whether debt or equity, any excess cash or set-aside funds that will be acquired during the purchase of an asset or rolled back in or contributed from other sources in order to complete the plan that you're proposing. Now, this all may sound complicated, but it's really quite simple, and we're going to see it in action by looking at an example. We're going to use that same example to illustrate how the sources and uses table should be constructed and what kind of useful insights we can communicate or interpret when we share a good sources and uses table. Let's take a look at one. Okay, so what we have here is a very simple sources and uses of funds table and it's divided into two big columns. So in America, we, we put them side by side. We've got sources on the left here and we've got uses of funds on the right. In the uses of funds section, uh, this is all the information that we're going to need to make the deal work. And so we've got some equity that we're going to have to raise. We've got some debt uh, that we know we're going to wind up assuming in this case. Uh, we might uh, have a refinancing line item. I'll talk about that in a minute. We might have a financing line item. We might have some CapEx in here of $500,000 to do some repairs. We may pay some advisory fees of $50,000 and some legal fees of $25,000. Let's just say that's to create a uh, syndication document. And we've got a requirement for some capital reserves of an additional $2,000 in this particular case. The total value of all of this stuff added up equals this number right here, which is $9,077,000. Now, whatever we do over here in the use of funds section, all the money we're going to need to make this deal work has to now be reflected over here. And this number, which is the total sources of funds, must equal this number, which is the total uses of funds. These guys are equal. That means that you've done it right and you've got a properly formatted a properly calculated uh, sources and uses of funds table if on the other hand you have a number over here like uh, 10 million dollars and on this side it's only nine million seventy seven thousand dollars you're going to wonder where is that extra money going is this going into somebody's pocket right away why are these numbers not equal? We should be able to see all of the numbers exposed. Okay, let's look at the sources side. On the sources side, we may have, I'm just putting these for example purposes, let's say a revolving line of credit. And let's say this could be one of two things. We might have had a revolving line of credit on our own that we've drawn $20,000 from and we're going to put it into uh, this property. Uh, we might have one that we're assuming from the seller that's been drawn $20,000 and we're going to wind up taking ownership of that. And so we're going to owe that $20,000. But the bottom line is there's a revolver right there. I put it in there for as a placeholder. We've got a major uh, first, de first trust deed loan here of $4,800,000. We're going to assume that loan. Whenever we assume a loan, that has to be reflected both on the sources side and on the uses side, because basically it's a wash. In other words, it's not going to affect uh, the amount of sponsor equity that is needed to close this deal. So any assumptions are going to be reflected on both the sources side and the uses side. We might make, uh, in this particular deal, an arrangement with the seller to, to, to do a second, um, a take back of a second. And in this case, I've listed $2 million here. Now the $2 million is going to wind up coming off the total equity that's required left to and plus this money here that's required to make this deal close. So we've got $2 million there. We might have uh, $1,500 in a capital reserve fund that we're going to wind up assuming from the seller. Note that we need $2,000 in this particular case. So we need more than what we're going to take over. We might have put together a syndication, which is where this legal fees for $25,000 uh, comes from. Uh, we may have been able to raise $1 million in that SPE. In this particular case, it's acquisition LPE 123, like LLC. And that's going to contribute $1 million. And 
I'm going to stop there because and I'm going to draw a line because now what we have is all of our sources of funds up to this point here and it still doesn't equal this number there's some left over so if we take this number this nine million dollar number and we subtract from it all of these other sources we're going to be left with one million two hundred and fifty five thousand five hundred dollars this number right here represents the required sponsor equity or it might be an additional raise if we can add it into maybe we can add we could raise some more money through the SPE or otherwise we're going to need 1.255 million dollars in order to close this deal and it's very clear to everybody who sees this now let's play with some numbers so we can talk through some other examples here I want to show you what happens when we increase or decrease some of these numbers let's say we bring this number and I want you to put your attention right here let's let's put uh, these uh, in proper format by the way any any number that has been hand typed is going to be in blue any number that gets calculated is going to be in black okay so <clears throat> these numbers are also blue at the moment and if I change the capital reserves to let's say fifteen hundred dollars that I own, that I need watch what happens to this number right here it drops this this number here and this number here remain the same the total sources and uses is the same but the amount of sponsor equity uh, changes it drops okay I don't need an extra five hundred dollars same thing that happens here if I'm able to raise more than a million dollars let's say I'm able to raise two million dollars the only thing that the sponsor then in this case needs to come to the table with is two hundred and fifty five thousand five hundred dollars now that is <clears throat> assuming that the bank or the lender is going to allow you to get away with contributing only two hundred fifty five thousand five hundred dollars now this is if we were to figure out what percentage that is of the total acquisition price I might put in a little bit of a formula here and let's change that to a percentage that's three percent of the total acquisition price which includes the debt plus the equity so the LTV of two hundred and fifty five thousand five hundred dollars is three percent and a banker or a lender or capital provider might look at that and say okay the sponsors coming to the table with three percent that may or may not be sufficient okay they may take into account both the acquisition and the sponsorship equity and so it's going to be essentially the same formula uh, except it's going to be the uh, we're going to add F10 and this one here and then divide it and change that to a percentage and that shows that the total group the acquisition LP and the sponsor equity all combined which they might not ever see is now 27 percent and that might be a much more palatable number uh, for the bank but the bank or the capital provider is going to have some specific numbers that they're going to be running against this to figure out uh, you know how much skin you have in the game and they're going to want to make sure that you've got some skin in the game or they might consider your risk to be too high okay now check this out it might be possible that the seller might charge you for that second mortgage let's say they're going to charge you uh, two points okay and so refinancing of existing or financing fees here for this two million dollars is going to be equal to this number times point zero two or two points another forty thousand dollars check it out the uses went up but it stayed exactly the same as the sources the only thing that really changed here is the amount of equity that the sponsor needs to come to the table with it went up to two hundred and ninety five thousand five hundred dollars so really useful table for for figuring things out on your own it's also a really useful table for communicating uh, how a particular capital stack is 
being constructed and what the funds are going to be used for. It's useful for making sure that we don't have somebody taking cash out of the deal. Uh, if these numbers match, then we should know exactly where all of our money is going. That's going to be comforting to capital providers. And it's also useful for determining the uh, partners, for communicating the partners that are going to be in a deal. Let's say you're going to a capital provider. You've got the first trust deed already covered. Let's say that's covered by a uh, Wells Fargo mortgage. And you find somebody that is maybe not the seller, somebody else who wants to, to provide you a contribution of $2 million. So this is no longer seller tape back. Let's say this is a... Um, uh, this is just a secondary. Okay. And this particular second is being provided by a high net worth individual. A high net worth individual comes in and is willing to contribute $2 million until they look at your sources and uses table and they see there's an acquisition LP 123 SPE in here. And they might come back to you and ask, what is this person? What is this thing? And you might say, well, you know, I spent $25,000 for a lawyer to craft a, um, a syndicate, some syndication documents, a private placement memorandum, operating agreement, and we've syndicated the $2 million, and that actually equals uh, 10, 10 people who are contributing $200,000 uh, each. And at that point, it gives the second capital provider an opportunity to say, whether they like that arrangement or not. If they see this acquisition LP123 and they don't like the fact that they're going to be uh, shoulder to shoulder or rubbing elbows with 20 other um, sophisticated investors in a, in a 506 Reg D who all have $200,000 in it and think they own the, the place, um, that second capital provider is going to be able to say, well, I either want to assume all of it and I'm going to make this $4 million. And you are going to get rid of these guys. And you're going to contrib contribute $335,500 now to the deal. I'm going to cover it for $4 million, And you're going to have to contribute 4% of the project, which is going to be this number here. And so this is a really handy tool to host or have discussions around your deal and how it's being funded and how it's being structured and making sure that everybody involved in the deal who's providing capital is comfortable with what you're doing.